Hi friends! For the next few weeks, I'm going to be talking about brains to all you singers, voice teachers, and vocal coaches. Why should you care about brains? Yours or anybody's? Because your brain sings before you do. Knowing how your brain works for singing helps in so many ways. Today and in the weeks that follow, I'm going to share some basic stuff about brains and help you start to connect the dots. This first video, today's subject, is about motor memory. If you're interested in these short videos that are about brains and designed for singers, then we can be friends. We're already friends. We can be brain nerds together. These brainy videos are meant to give you a little taste of what neurovocal teacher training and certification looks like. So if you find this content compelling, get more information, get excited, and join the next neurovocal class. I'm Meredith Colby, author of Money Notes, How to Sing High, Loud, Healthy, and Forever, and creator of Neurovocal for Popular Styles, a way to approach singing for all the styles we sing into the microphones that is based on brain science. I coach singers as well as offering professional training to voice teachers and coaches. I mentioned the Neurovocal Teacher Training and Certification class already. It is empowering and fun, and you won't find anything else like it. So to find out more, you can DM me directly, or you can go to neurovocal.com. The link is in my bio or the description below. This is the model for Neurovocal for Popular Styles. We're going to start here with your motor memories. Yes, motor memories are your memories for how you drive a car or a motorcycle or your moped, but that's not all that they are. Motor memories, which can also be called procedural memory or implicit memory, are most commonly referred to as muscle memory. Basically, it refers to how you do the things you do, from opening a jar, to dancing, to walking, to playing piano. All the things you do automatically and unconsciously are stored in the think tank as motor memories. So your brain has this massive library of these motor memories and you are accessing them and using them constantly as you move through your day. And this is fun. You made each and every one of those motor memories your own self. Whatever that physical movement was or groups of physical movement were, you made it for them. From the way you picked up a cup when you were a toddler to the way you learned to hold a pencil and write to the way you learned to sing. You created each one of these memories from the simple to the complex by repeating a task enough times for your brain to build an unconscious memory that was specific to the task. Now, to be fair, it can be a bumpy ride to create a motor memory. That cup that you picked up when you were a toddler, you probably did a lot of spilling before you became the brilliantly adept cup user that you are today. Learning something difficult, like playing an instrument or playing basketball, or for many people, singing, can take a while. Your body has to match your intention for an outcome with the actual outcome enough times for you to get the hang of things. So while many motor memories are built unconsciously, some take a commitment of time and attention to build. Building reliable motor memories means having an intention to do a thing and doing that thing in the same way over and over. It takes time for your brain to make the connection that this is a behavior that deserves to be moved into the long-term storage pile of stuff we do unconsciously. We, meaning you and your brain. And that, my friends, is both the good news and the bad news. The things that you do that feel easy and natural to you are indications that you have a strong motor memory for that thing. So if you want your thing to be easy, whether it's singing in a high mix or accompanying yourself on guitar, then you have to do it enough times to build that motor memory. You have to do it often enough and in a predictable enough way that your brain goes, oh, okay, so this is a thing. We're doing this now. So we're doing this now. No matter how smart or talented you are, it takes repetition over time for a behavior to become natural, easy, and automatic. And if that's what you want from a specific behavior, like certain things about your singing, for instance, then it's worth the investment to create that strong motor memory. It doesn't have to be like an arduous task. It can be something that's fun to do. The way your brain decides what motor memories to tap into is the subject of the next video. I'm Meredith Colby. Have a great week.